because we're constantly learning from one another and then helping one another. And so, for example, this morning, I was learning from grad students, um, and then this afternoon, I was helping um, a grad student with his practice qualifying exam talk. And so, no matter where you are in like the hierarchy of science, what we're always constantly learning from one another. And so it doesn't matter that I'm a postdoc. I don't know how to do this technique that I was learning. I don't know how to do ribosome profiling yet. These grad students do. And speaking of which, I was a grad student just a couple of a few months ago. Um, and so you come to realize in science that the best way to really learn things is they're learning directly from the people who know it best. And it's really, really, um, I feel very, very fortunate to be in this environment where there are people, there are lots of people um, around who can actually show you the ropes. And it's so important to really try to get that hands on um, at the bench watching someone do the experiments because there's so many little nuances and so when they were showing me the technique um, I like asked can I take pictures and they're like oh yeah that's totally fine and so they even gave me a protocol with like all of their notes on it um, which was super duper helpful because although they sent like the official protocol earlier there's always those little um, those little details those little important things like oh you may need to make sure that you this is gonna be hard to dissolve, you're going to want to like warm it up in your um, gloved hand um, and then to mix it you want to like do this in the cold room on the shake. you know. There's so many little details um, and little things that the people who have done it before um, and who do it a lot are going to be able to help you with that you're not going to be able to find in just those written protocols. And so, but it's really um, important too that you remember that like people are teaching you and it's your job then to teach people. Um, and so I might not be able to help with this, people with this technique yet, but hopefully there are other things that I'll be able to help, um, help others with. And I think that there can be this tendency in all sorts of um, walks of life, um, all sorts of areas and things to kind of be like well I survived so you should have to too or I was treated uh, badly by my superior so now it's my turn to get revenge on the people below me and I just think that is so wrong um, so I say like always remember that people helped you and you need to pay it forward and help others and I think that um, being able to do that is just such a privilege to be able to help one another and to be able to learn from one another. And I'm sure this is going to be really windy and noisy and I apologize. In addition to like, so I know that I'm like super duper fortunate to be in this place where it's this really collaborative environment and people are really helpful and willing to, um, to share their knowledge. Um, but if you don't have someone near you that knows how to do the technique, um, you can always reach out to like authors of papers and things and um, if you have any questions or you, that sort of thing uh, maybe the people in your lab can put you in touch with someone um, there are people that are willing to help um, it sometimes it can feel like you're all alone um, but there 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 are good people out there who would be happy to help um, and in terms of things that aren't just like experimental methods, so so many times it's not just like experiments that you're learning other from other people in the lab. There's so much just knowledge that people build up about like a particular research area. And I think that one of the things about like conferences going virtual, a lot of conferences like going virtual during the pandemic, one of the things you lost from those meetings was that people would just be kind of like chatting with one another what well, was during the meetings unfortunately it would often be like the big name pis uh, like in the in-person meetings they would just be like chatting with one another even in some of like, the virtual conferences like when you would log in and they would be already logged on before and they didn't seem to realize that people could hear them they would be like chatting with one another and you can hear that i mean like they're talking talking about all this stuff and they have all of this knowledge um, but then you feel kind of like you're missing out 
But if you could just, if you have opportunities to talk with other scientists, especially people in the field, there's so much that they can just explain or they can just say um, to really just get a sense of where their mind is currently at. Because when you're reading like their papers and stuff, that's typically work that they did like a year or so ago or whatever. And so who knows what else is new since then. And um, so, yeah, so I re- in terms of that, so you don't always like have access to people to talk to about these things. Um, but that's why I recommend like try to figure, find any sort of like in more informal ways that you can um, or at least more like, I don't know, up to date ways that you can get into touch with people. So you can email the people who write the articles if you have specific questions. Um, you can see if they're giving any seminars or if they gave any seminars. I really like um, finding, like, searching on YouTube and seeing if they've given any recent lectures because as I was explaining in my post the other day, like when people are giving um, like talks, especially if there's like a Q&A answer session after, you get to hear, um, you can take it, you, I don't know, I feel like you learn a lot more than if you just read the paper, at least about certain things about the bigger picture idea. With papers are really great for getting those details, um, but when you see them talk about their work, you can really kind of get a, um, a sense of how they're interpreting things and where they think the future directions are and what really gets them excited. Um, and those are often um, really valuable things and I think that as scientists too, it's important that we can talk to one another about our work as well. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of times in science, there's like, um, because of competition and stuff, it can be hard to talk about the specifics of your work. Um, but I, it's really, um, at least with the people you can talk to, so maybe your other lab mates, um, really just practice and um, telling them about the, your work and also hearing about their work um, and so part of um, and either in an informal way or also in like formal ways and so you have to as a grad student say give a lot of um, presentations so I was helping someone today with their qualifying exam presentation um, although it wasn't very helpful because it was all um, about stuff I knew nothing about but um, I did what I could Um, but doing practice talks is so helpful. Going over people's writing, um, do whatever you can to help pay it forward. Um, and hopefully people will keep paying it forward to you. Okay. Gotta go. Bye.